And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present the two and only Wayne and Schuster. Starring Johnny Wayne and his good buddy, Frank Schuster. And here they are. Thank you, and welcome to another Wayne and Schuster show. We've got some interesting stuff, so stick around, won't you? The Wayne and Schuster Festival of your favorite commercials. You know, here in Ireland, we're always after something fresh and happy to raise the spirits. Well, no, we finally found it. It's strong and vigorous and manly and sets the old pulses of singing. And so we named it after this country. We called it Irish whiskey. <laughs> Manly, yes, but I like it too. <laughs> oh, it's a troubled land. <laughs> My wife. She's marvelous. She's one in a million. I really mean it. She looks after a large house, takes care of a family of seven, does all the cooking, all the cleaning, and still manages to hold down a very important job, Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada. <laughs> My wife, she's sincere, dedicated, thrifty, industrious. You two-timing rat! I knew I'd find you with her! <laughs> and so jealous. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. What have we here? Oh, your breakfast, sire. Ah, splendid. You know, Lackey, there's no better way of starting off the morning than with a hot muffin with lots of butter. Oh, that's not butter, sire. That's margarine. <laughs> margarine? Huh. <laughs> You know, when you're a king, margarine is definitely redundant. I wonder why some men smell so dumb. I mean, they use one scent on their faces, another on their body, another on their hair, another... Oh, well, you know what I mean. That's dumb to me. I think a man should use one really neat scent all over his body. And for my taste, that scent is Scottish leather. Then he smells of one clean, honest scent all over. And can that be bad? So I give Scottish leather to all the men I really care about. That way, all my men wear Scottish leather, or they wear nothing at all. Hey, you gonna talk or you're gonna shoot pool? <laughs> Good news, dear. Mary and the children are coming for the holidays. Oh. I don't think I could stand those kids for a whole weekend. You don't want to see your own grandchildren? I'm sorry. Oh, I know what it is, George. It's irregularity, isn't it? Yes, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a constipated kid. <laughs>
Okay, you passed your test. You can drive in Quebec. <laughs> right now, we're going to take you back in time to the year 1975 B.C., the old biblical days when football was played by ancient tribes with primitive cruelty and a vengeful lust for blood. Very much like today. <laughs> Would you roll the ancient replay, please? Behold, live from the Old Testament, through the age-old facilities of the CBC, the Canaanite Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> it's the game of the millennium, the annual biblical football classic, the Matzo Bowl. Between those traditional rivals, the Philistines, the best in the West, versus the surprising underdog club from the Holy Land, the Jericho Jets. Good afternoon, football fans, and may blessings be upon you. A mighty host is gathered here at the Matzo Bowl to witness this annual classic between the Philistines and the Jericho Jets. Do you have the actual attendance, Jeremiah? It has just been handed to me, Abner. The paid attendance is 51,004 score and 10. That is a record crowd, Kanana Hara. Get your milk and honey here. Milk and honey. And now, before the opening kickoff, let us descend to our reporter on the field. Come in, Mordecai. Thank you, Abner, and a hearty shalom to all you football fans. <laughs> Behold my guest, the indomitable coach of the Jericho Jets, Saul King. Hi, Mord, may thy tribe increase. <laughs> well, Saul, the prophets have spoken, and they pick the Philistines to prevail by eight touchdowns. How dost thou feel? I am sore afraid that they are right. Among our fans, there is no hope of victory but weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. No hope at all. Well, who can prevail against the might of their giant linebacker, the monster Goliath? Behold him warming up on the field. <laughs> Behold his strength. Like a ravening wolf is he to our quarterbacks. Without mercy doth he sack them. <laughs> ah, woe is us. There is talk in the marketplace of a new quarterback on thy club. Yes, a young shepherd lad named David. David. That's right, he's warming up yonder. parochial high school star last year? Yes, he was all Jerusalem. But he's too young. A beardless youth. Today I go with my veteran quarterback, Methuselah, a man of more experience. How much more experience? Is 900 years enough for you? Well, blessings on all thy household and back to the booth. Well, the Jericho Jets are ready to come out upon the field. So let us hearken to the PA. Introducing the Jericho Jets. Wide receiver from the University of Babylon, Bobby Joe Ezekiel. And right tackle from the University of Sodom, Big Daddy Nehemiah. Field goal specialist from Southern Rabbinical, leading the league in converts, Bo the Toe Ephraim. The Jets, all-star backfield. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Starting at quarterback in his 900th season, Methuselah. And finally, the backup quarterback, the slinging shepherd, David. together for last-minute instructions. Ye both know the rules. Hey. Know ye the rules. Oh, the rules. Yeah. Thou shalt not pile on. Thou shalt not commit illegal interference. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's face mask. You mean like this?
That is right. <laughs> Philistines shall kick off. Jericho shall receive. Back in a moment with the opening kickoff of the Matzo Bowl.